What's up homies? Welcome back to the Lettuce Babe channel. My name is Notori and in today's video I'm going to be talking about the disappearance of Larry Stackhouse Jr. So I'm so happy to be back to this channel. Um, I took a couple months off because I've been focusing on Lettuce Babe as a brand on our Instagram and our other podcast projects but I've covered this case on our podcast series in the past and what strikes me then and now is how little media coverage Larry's case has brought, and I mean little. Um, even when it comes to Phoenix and Mytrice, those women have been covered in a little bit of a ways, not enough, but they've, they've been talked about a little bit. And it seems like I've only seen a few articles written about him, and even then they're very short, very brief. So I'm grateful to be bringing this case to your attention again today so that you can learn a little bit more about Larry and the day that he went missing. Of course, I mean no disrespect by talking about this case. This is just me bringing awareness and sharing the information so that we can maybe bring him home or at least learn more about what happened to him. So, of course, it's a gloomy day. It's like 40 degrees here in Texas. It's cold and I'm hoping that the lighting's not too weird. I'm going to try to correct it, but just bear with me. Um, I'll first talk about Larry, what kind of guy he was, how people talked about him, etc. And then we'll move on to what happened that day. Larry Darnell Stackhouse Jr., which what a cool name is that, was born September 2nd, 1986, and he went missing December 2nd, 2005 at the age of 19. He was last seen around 6.30 p.m., leaving his home in the vicinity of the 100th block Lynn Circle in Syracuse, New York. As far as his general description goes, I'm going to read off a few notes that I made so I don't get anything wrong, and then we'll move on. So... Larry is described as an African-American male, medium complexion. He was 5'10", he weighed approximately 170 pounds. He has short brown hair, brown eyes. He, he does not wear glasses or contacts. He has caps on his teeth, a pierced left ear, and a tattoo on his right arm that read Larry. Larry is also a junior, so his father's name is also Larry Stackhouse Sr. I also thought it was important to mention how his parents saw him, how his parents thought of him, and how his parents knew him to be as a young man. His parents, Lorraine and Larry Stackhouse Sr., say that he worked at a nursing home, he was never involved in gang activity, he was a good kid, we raised him to be respectable, my wife and I have modest jobs, and he hung out with very positive people. He was leading by example, he was working and staying focused. I realize it must be so scary to send your child out into this scary world after pouring so much positivity into them and realizing how nice and how much of a light and how much they can impact the world in a, in a really good way only for them to be met with so many unforeseen dangers um, not just Larry on this particular day but just at any point in his life that must be a really tumultuous time for a parent and Larry's mom and dad never quit looking for him i mean when i get to the end of the story i'll talk about kind of the measures that they've went to and reaching out to people in the area but they have never quit his mother lorraine even said i never found anything in his room pertaining to drugs guns or anything like that we raised him in church everyone loved him on december 2nd 2005 larry and one of his friends went to a basketball game at the christians brothers academy in dewitt after the game his friend said he dropped him off at a store near Larry's house but Larry would not return home after that night so him and his friend go to this basketball game and on his way back home he was just expected to come back home like a normal day but even by the accounts of his friend he didn't show up back to his home Larry was a good kid so being that it was unusual that he didn't reach out to his parents and he did not return home his parents grew worried and they put in a missing persons report I found this very interesting because following the missing persons report, the police received three notable leads. The first, Larry's friend, the one that went to the basketball game with him, changed his story. He now states, Larry got into an altercation with a group of Native American students at Corcoran High School. The second lead was a woman who attended Corcoran High School stated that she overheard two individuals bragging about killing Larry and leaving his body on the land belonging to the Onangonan nation and i hope i'm saying that correctly it's an i believe it's a native american reservation and then the third lead was a letter that larry stackhouse senior received from a jail inmate who also claimed to overhear a similar conversation about larry's killing 
So unfortunately, after these three detrimental leads, I believe the only one that kind of took any interest or was even reputable was the Onangana Nation lead. Um, it's believed that he might potentially be on that reservation if he was. Um, killed in any kind of way then he could potentially be on that land and from what i understand when it comes to native american reservations it's very sacred potentially or it's kind of like uncharted territory so that may be why they haven't found anything or haven't been able to search as in depth as they would need to to figure out what happened to larry so as far as possible motive you've heard how Larry was thought of, how respectable he was, how important he was to his family. So it's kind of been very confusing as to who would want to harm Larry. Um, of course, you can never really trust people's intentions when it comes to violence or any kind of like ill will. Sometimes people do things without any cause. But the Stackhouse has heard of a rumor that Larry was suspected to have stolen approximately $700 from his killers. But they don't believe that. Larry hasn't been in any serious trouble before. He has two tickets. One is a seatbelt violation and the other is a loud music violation. And although these tickets have been converted to warrants, they weren't anything to the measure of theft or drug related crimes or any kind of excessive violence. Of course, when it comes to seeking media coverage within the black community, when one of us has gone missing, it can be very difficult. And by difficult, I mean impossible. As I said prior, as of 2018, Larry Stackhouse Jr. would be 32 years old. Uh, there's not been any leads on where he is, if he is alive, if he is well, if he is okay in any sort of way. And to be completely honest, by this point um, in the investigation, I feel as though some ill will has happened to Larry and it has likely been deadly. I feel very, very, very heavy hearted that his parents have never given up looking for him. Much like Phoenix Colden's parents, they have not quit. They have not died down, they have not stopped and it's been kind of a heart-wrenching experience for them on a daily basis. I mean, after 13 long years for your parents to not have given up on you, I really hope that they get some type of closure or peace or continued strength because I cannot imagine what it must feel like to not know. That is all the information that I have on the case of Larry Stackhouse Jr. I wish there was more information, I wish there was more coverage, more details, but that is all I've been able to find. Um, if you guys are liking these videos or if you have any suggestions of any cases you'd like for me to cover or talk about, please leave them down below. Please leave any of your prayers or thoughts or positive energy, anything like that that you could give to the family as well because I feel like anyone could use it and I will talk to you guys very soon.